Today, we are going to learn about inequalities. This is the first chapter of Edexcel for the Mathematics 2. As a first part of this topic, we are going to learn about algebraic method to solve inequalities. Suppose we need to solve 1 over x is greater than x. How do we identify this range which satisfy this inequality? What you need to do is initially let's draw y equals to 1 over x graph and y equals to x graph separately. This is the 1 over x graph. y equals to 1 over x graph is like this. This is the graph of y equals to 1 over x graph. And this is the graph of y equals to x. After drawing this, we need to see whether what is the range where this 1 over x graph become more than x. That means uh, the black color graph behave above than the x value. Above than, sorry, above than the red color graph. So you can say over here, if I come across over here, this is the y equals to x graph and this is the y equals to 1 over x graph which is above than the uh, y equals to x graph. Therefore, you can see up to this point, the black color line is above than the red color line. Therefore, from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, you can see uh, the graph y equals to 1 over x is bigger than the y equals to x graph. That means this is uh, one region which satisfy uh, 1 over x is greater than x is from 0 to 1. How do we verify with that? We can understand that the black color graph is above than the red color graph. Again, can you see any other region where the black color graph is above than the red color graph? Yes. Below minus 1, from minus 1 below, all the figures you can see this black color graph y equals to 1 over x graph is above than the y equals to x graph or the red color graph. So from less than minus 1 even you can see this behavior, right? So we can understand the region which satisfy 1 over x is greater than x would be x is less than minus 1 and in between 1 to 0, 0 to 1. So that is the answer for this question, right? Let's see, we will get the same equation and try to do some modification and let's see the possibility of understanding those situations to solve this problem. You know that simply if you had 1 over x is, 1 over x over x, sorry, 1 over x is greater than x, simply can't you multiply like a cross? Why is it possible or is it not possible? That's what you need to understand from this question. Then I will multiply both sides by x. The same concept I am doing this like cross multiplication, right? Whether this is possible or not, that's what we need to understand, right? So if you multiply both sides by x, you'll be getting the answer. 1 is greater than x squared. So this x and this x it cancel. It can turn up to 1 remain from the left hand side and x into x, x squared remain in the right hand side. Then how do you identify this inequality? First we will draw y equals to one line over here and y equals to x squared that is over here. Now see whether what is the region where y equals to 1 is bigger than x squared. The red color line is bigger than the black color line. So you can see from plus 1 to minus 1 this is the region. Is that the same answer what you obtain over here? This is the exact uh, solution for this question. It's minus 1 to less than minus 1 and answer from 0 to 1 is the exact solution. But if you do this modification, you get the answer from minus 1 to plus 1. This is totally wrong. Therefore, this alteration, if you have such inequality, you cannot cross multiply and you can get this, you cannot get this answer. That is a concept where we have to understand from this modification to solve uh, this kind of inequality, right? Then, without doing that, I'll multiply this both sides by x squared. Whether is it possible? That's what we need to understand, right? Then if you multiply both sides by x squared, 1 over x into x squared is x. x into x squared is x cube. Then I will draw y equals to x graph separately. 
and y equals to x cube graph separately, the black color line. Now our objective is the red color line is bigger than the black color line, where you can see from 0 to 1. Yeah, red color line is above. Again, after minus 1 onwards even, you can see the red color line is above than that. So that is the same inequality what you obtain over here. Right. So uh, you can understand that here, uh, this modification gives you the same answer of solving that uh, inequality. Right. Then if you had such question, if you want to multiply any term, you have to multiply by the square number, not with just a linear number, not with cubic number, not with power 5 number, but with power 2, power 4, power 6 terms, etc. Right. Then you may have in some problem, how do you to get this coordinates, this x coordinates? Simply what you need to do is you have to simplify this intersection. How do you obtain these intersections? You have to solve these two as simultaneous equations. If you solve this, y equals to x squared is y equals to 1, x squared equals to 1, that is x equals to plus 1 or minus 1, the square root of it. From there, you can get this x coordinates. Here, how do you find these intersections? You need to simplify x cube equals to x, right? x cube equals to x. Then if you solve this, what do you get? x cube minus x equals to 0. If you factorize it, you will obtain the answers plus 1, 0 and minus 1. From there, you can get this intersection anyway. We had some concept of using algebraic method to obtain these answers, right? Let's go ahead with the problem come across over here. Why we cannot multiply both sides by x or power, uh, what do you call odd powers? Or you cannot, why you, you cannot just multiply like a cross? The reason here is we can understand that like a uh, for this inequality, if you substitute these figures, it satisfies this condition. Now you can say 1 over x is greater than x for these figures. So you forget about these values. Anyway, in this inequality, if you multiply x by both sides, what is the problem you come across? Suppose that if you write in this inequality, if you multiply by x, x can be any figure. You, uh, when you do this kind of a modification, it should be applicable for all the possible values of x. Then, suppose that if this, uh, so I'm multiplying this both sides by x and x, for example, then if x is 1, if you multiply both sides by 1, it doesn't make an impact on this inequality. If you multiply both sides by 2, then it, that one also, you, do, you don't see any impact on this. But if, you, if this x value is minus 1, what happened? If you get, if you multiply by minus number, what happened to this inequality? We know that if you multiply any a number, any inequality by minus one, the side of the inequality changes. Therefore, if this x value is an even number, sorry, if it is a negative number, not even number, if it is a negative number, this inequality changes to the other side. This inequality changes to the other side. That means for positive answers for x, inequality behave in a one's way and if the x value is a negative, inequality behave in opposite way. So that is not possible. So when you multiply any inequality by some kind of a figure, the side of the inequality cannot be changes. But why if you multiply by x squared, it's, it doesn't make an impact. You can understand that whether it's a positive value or a negative value, when you squared it, what happened? Obviously, it will turn up into a positive answer. Therefore, Whatever the uh, value you add for x, whether it's a positive value or a negative value of x, it doesn't make an impact of the initial inequality. That is why uh, you, you can, if you uh, want to do this kind of a modification for any kind of inequalities, you have to multiply by power 2, power 4, power 6, etc. Not like power 1, power 3, power 5, like odd power. X terms not should be multiplied to do any modification for this inequality. Now you may be having problem. What is the point of having these kind of modifications? You will understand this concept in next questions. Right. Suppose that we need to solve x squared over x minus 2 is less than x plus 1. So you know that drawing x squared over x minus 2 and drawing x plus 1 is quite hard. 
it's not easy as we think right first option is that you can go ahead with the algebraic method you can just draw x squared over x minus 2 is a one graph and uh, y equals to x plus 1 in another graph then you identify the intersections and to solve it rather than that why cannot use some kind of a simplification to get this answer now you can see first i'll try to remove this denominator to remove this denominator I can cross multiply or you can multiply both sides by x minus 2. Is this possible? No. The reason is that here the power over here is x minus 2 is power 1. I told you in the previous examples, uh, you cannot multiply any inequality by a odd powers. Therefore, if you want to simplify this, you need to multiply both sides by x minus 2 squared, not with just x minus 2 to remove this denominator. Now what happened if you multiply both sides by x minus 2 squared, the left hand side turn up into x minus 2 squared into x squared over x minus 2, then you can cancel 1x minus 2 with power 2 over here. This side doesn't make any impact. Then bring all, then what is the, uh, what is the term remaining in this side? x squared into x minus 2 here, power 2 and power 1 get cancelled over here. So this term is x squared into x minus 2, then I'll brought this term to this side. And this is turn up to minus x plus 1 into x minus 2 squared is less than 0. I brought these terms to this side, right. Then children, don't expand this bracket and try to factorize because it's quite hard for do to the factorizing. You can understand from these both expressions, x minus 2 here, x minus 2 into x into x. This one is x plus into x minus 2 into x minus 2. Now you can see from both expressions, x minus 2 is common. Then I can take x minus 2 out from this expression and this expression as well. If you take x minus 2 out, the remaining term is only x squared. This term remains. Minus from here, this is x plus 1 into x minus 2 into x minus 2. If you take 1x minus 2 out, it will turn up to x plus 1 into x minus 2. From square, I just took one term out. Then expand this bracket. x squared minus x into x is x squared. x into minus 2 plus 1 into x is minus 6 into minus is plus 6. 1 into minus 2 is minus 2 into minus is plus 2. Right. Then let's see whether, uh, like, if you can see that x, x squared and x squared get cancelled. Remaining expression is x minus 2 into x plus 2 is less than 0. Right. How do we solve this uh, quadratic inequality? You can understand this a uh, quadratic inequality, right? Okay, that means quadratic inequality is less than zero. Initially, equate y equals to x minus two into x plus two. Remo uh, what do you call? Forget about this inequality mark and just simplify x minus two into x plus two equals to zero and get the answers for x. What are the x answers if you equate into zero, plus two and minus two? Then draw y equals to x minus 2 into x plus 2 graph. It's a quadratic graph somewhere like this. Here we already know how to uh, get the, how to draw the uh, quadratic graph which we show you x minus 2 into x plus 2. So after drawing this, we have to see whether which range where this function is negative. So you can see from here below it's positive. From here above also it's positive. From plus 2 to minus 2, even in this range only you can see this value is below x axis that is negative. Then what you can understand is, then what is the range which satisfies this inequality? You can say that it's from minus 2 to plus 2. It's from minus 2 to plus 2 would be the answer for this question. Right? So that is how you need to solve that kind of inequality. Let's move up to this question. Now our objective is to solve this matter is remove these fractional answers or you can just draw x over x plus 1, 1 graph and 2 over x plus 2, 3 is another graph and then draw the intersection and finding that's another one possible way but it's quite hard for us to do or drawing those graph and finding intersection and doing all this stuff uh, kind of hard. To avoid this x plus 1, you cannot multiply just x plus 1 and to remove this x plus 3, you cannot just multiply by x plus 3. What is the objective is multiply both sides by, to remove this x plus 1, multiply this side by x plus 1 squared, this side also with x plus 1 squared. To remove this x plus 3, 
multiply this side by x plus 3 squared, this side also x plus 3 squared. The reason is that when you do any kind of alteration for this kind of uh, inequality, that should be always a square figure, right? Okay. Then if you multiply both sides finally by x plus 1 squared into x plus 3 squared, then this side if you multiply by x plus 1 x squared into x plus 3 squared, 1 x plus 1 to x plus 1 cancels over here. So this side remain with x, x plus 1, x my x plus 3 squared. Less than or equals to from here, 1 x plus 3 to x plus 3 get cancels. The remaining is 2 x plus 1 squared x plus 3. Then brought all the terms to one side. From here the remaining term is x, x plus 1, x plus 3 squared. If you brought this term to this side, it's turned up to minus 2 times of x plus 1 squared into x plus 3. It's less than or equals to 0. Now let's try to factorize this. See whether from both the expressions I can take 1 x plus 1 out here and here. From uh, another expression is x plus 3 also out. If you take x plus 1 and x plus 3 out, the remaining terms are x and x plus 3. From here the remaining terms are minus 2 and x plus 1. Then simplify this bracket. Then what do you get? x plus 1 into x plus 3 into x squared plus x minus 2. See whether is this factorized further. Yes, if you factorize x squared plus x minus 2, answer is x plus 2 into x minus 1. Then you can understand that this is a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation. How to get this inequality? Right, okay. When you draw this quadratic equation, first equate this c to 0 and get the intersections of its x-axis. Plus 1, x plus 1 equals to 0 means x equals to minus 1. x plus 3 equals to 0 means x equals to minus 3. x plus 2 equals to 0 means x equals to minus 2. And x plus x minus 1 equals to 0 means x equals to plus 1. Then if it is a, uh, what do you call? Quadratic power 4 equation. If it is a power 4 equation and if it is all the x values are positive, if you multiply all of these terms are positive, you get a plus x to the power 4. If you get a plus x to the power 4 shape, you will get a shape like W letter. That's a concept you have to understand in power 4 equation. If the power of x to the power 4, if the term with x to the power 4 term is a positive answer, you get a shape like W. Then the graph which passing through minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and w with a w shape would be somewhere like this. Then suppose that if you multiply all of these figures, you get a negative answer for x to the power 4. Then you get a shape like m letter. It's just like m letter. But here it's not in only with this, it's like a w letter, right? Then we have to see whether we, during which range where this value is negative means below x axis. Minus 3 to minus 2 is a one answer. Again, Minus 1 into plus 1 is another answer. Minus 3 to minus 2 is a one answer and minus 1 to plus 1 is a another answer. That is the answer for this inequality. Right. That is how you need to answer uh, for example number 2. Right. Let's come up with this exercise. How to do this uh, inequality, how to solve these inequalities. Right. If you happen to have a question like this, this is just that there is no fractions at all. You can draw this 5x plus 6 to other side. Then if you have brought it, it will turn up to x squared minus 5x minus 6 is less than 0. Then you can equate, uh, you have to solve, you have to, if you factorize it, you will obtain the answers x equals to minus 6, x minus, x minus 6 into x plus 1 is less than 0. So if you equate this, you'll be getting the answer x equals to minus 1 and x equals to plus 6, right. Then you can understand it's a quadratic equation with a positive coefficient, so it's a graph with a minima, which passes through minus 1 and 6. Then what is the range we need? This quadratic part is less than 0, means negative. Where you can see it's negative. Here to here is a negative answer. That means during which x values, from minus 1 to plus 6 only, you'll be getting a negative graph for this uh, inequality. With that you can say answer is x is greater than minus 1 and less than 6. That is the answer for this question. Right. Then let's come up with this example. We need to solve this quadratic inequality 
x x into x plus one is greater than or equals to six. Simply expand this bracket and draw the six to other side. If you expand this bracket, it will turn up to x squared plus x minus six. Right. Then if you factorize it, you will obtain the answer x plus three into x minus two is greater than or equals to zero. If you equate this equation into zero, you will obtain x equals to minus three and x equals to minus plus two. Right. You can mark these two points over here. Then draw this quadratic inequality. It's a quadratic graph with a positive coefficient of x here. Then you can say it's a graph with a minimum. Then we want to see whether which range where the function is more than zero, greater than zero, positive. That means from here onwards it's positive and from here onwards it's positive. Every which x answers. x is less than minus three, the function value is positive. For x is greater than two, the function and value is positive. Therefore, you can say x is less than minus three and x is greater than two would be the answer for this quadratic, uh, for this inequality. Okay, that's how you need to obtain the answer for part b. Now let's come up with this example, right? Then two over x squared plus one is greater than one. Then when you multiply, if you want to simplify this, I can multiply both sides by x plus one squared. Why it's not uh, x plus one whole thing squared? The reason is that now you can see it doesn't make an impact on this value because if you substitute any figure over whatever the figure you put it, you get this answer as what? You get this answer as a positive answer. If it is a positive value or a negative value, whatever the value, so this answer for x squared plus one is always positive. Therefore, you can, without, without squaring this, you can just multiply both sides by x plus one, x squared plus one. That is the answer for this. If I just repeat it back, you can say that whatever the x value, you get this answer as positive, not like the previous exam, in the previous, previous example, you know that for certain figures, when you substitute into x, the answer become negative, but here, Whatever the value you substitute, answer is positive. Therefore, this is a square by function. Then you can just multiply with x plus one. X plus one, uh, x squared plus one, sorry. Then if you cross multiply, you're getting the answer. Two is uh, greater than x squared plus one, then probably this two to other side. That is x squared minus one, it will turn up into a quadratic inequality. Then if you equate x squared minus one, what do you get? X equals to plus one or minus one. So you can mark minus one and plus one. Then if you draw this X squared plus one graph, it's a graph with a minima. Then we need to see whether the range where X squared minus one is less than zero. See whether what is the direction of this quadratic part. It's less than zero, the negative range, where you can see the negative range. From here to here only you can see the negative range. Therefore, during X, which X values, from minus one to plus one would be the range where the function is negative. That means that is the answer for this inequality. That is how you need to obtain the answer for part C. If you come up with part D here, x squared two over x squared minus one is less than one. Then to simplify this, I have to multiply both sides by x squared minus one whole thing squared. Why here it's not x squared plus one thing, whole thing squared, but here why is it? The reason is that we know that if you substitute zero, what happened? This answer is a negative value. That means if you multiply both sides by just x squared minus one, and at the situation where x is equals to zero, the side of the inequality changes because you gain a negative answer for x squared minus one at x equals to zero. Therefore, we need to multiply both sides by x squared minus one whole thing squared. From this side, you cancel this one with one square term. From here, one into x squared minus one whole thing squared remain as it is. So the left hand side of the inequality turn up to two times of x squared minus one is greater than x squared minus one whole thing squared. Then bring this term over here. Then if you bring this term over here, it will turn up to x squared minus one whole thing squared minus two times of x squared minus one, right? Then you can see from there, both of the term x squared minus one is common. If you take x squared minus one common out of from this expression, another x squared minus one remain minus 
from this expression, if you brought it, it's minus two times of x, plus, x squared minus one. If you brought x squared minus one out, remaining is minus two. So this is turned up into x squared minus one into x squared minus three. So the factors are x minus one, x plus one. This is the difference between two square numbers here x plus root 3 and x minus root 3. Now you can see again it's a what? A quadratic equation, power 4 equation. Then if you equate into uh, if you equate into 0, what are the answers you get? Plus 1, sorry, it's plus 1. You can see plus 1 over here. Then uh, minus 1, it's here. Plus root 3, it's here minus root 3 sorry from here minus root 3 it's here right then we can draw the what is the power of x to the power 4 over here plus 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 so it's just like a w letter then what is the inequality we need to solve this fact is less than 0 the negative range here this part is less than 0 where you can see this negative from here to here and here to here you can say minus 1 to minus root 3 and plus 1 to plus root 3. Those are the ranges where you can see this quadratic function or the power 4 function become negative. Right. The next part is x over x minus 1 is less than or equals to 2x. To simplify this, what we supposed to do, you cannot just multiply with x minus 1 because this is an odd power. Right. Then you have to multiply both sides by x minus 1 squared. Then 1x minus 1 cancel over here. The remaining is x into x minus 1. From here 2x into x minus 1 whole thing squared. I can brought this term to this side. The it will turn up to minus 2x times of x minus 1 squared. You can write x minus 1 into x minus 1. I have expanded over here to just to understand the common factors easily. It's less than or equal to 0. Now you can see x is common here these two x's are common and this x minus 1 this x minus 1 is common if you brought x and x minus 1 out the remaining term over here is just 1 minus from here if you take x and x minus 1 out remaining term is minus 2 and x minus 1 then x into x minus 1 if you remove this bracket 1 minus 2x plus 2 turn up to minus 2x plus 3 is you can understand that that is less than or equals to zero. Or oh, there's another trick I have used to make the simplification. I'll multiply, I'll, I can take this minus x, minus one out of this expression, you can change the inequality. Or you can just draw uh, this uh, x into x minus one into minus two x plus three is less than or equals to zero graph even, doesn't matter. But uh, multiplying by both sides, I just make them into positive, that is for the convenience of this calculation. Then what are the solutions? If you make this equal to zero, you get the answer x equals to zero. It's a one part here, it's zero. Then x minus one equals to zero means x equals to plus one, it's here. The other part is two x minus three is equals to zero means x equals to three over two, that is over here. Then we can see if you get this quadratic inequality, that is, it's a quadratic inequality with a positive x cube coefficient. Therefore, just like this. We know that we have already learned how to draw this kind of a graph in our AS level. Then what is the range you need? The range what you need is children, we can understand its positive range. Where it become positive? Here and here. So the answer become 3 over 2 more than that O answer from plus 1 to 0. Right. Then let's see what happens if you use this in a quadratic inequality and if you do this. Yeah, let's see what happened to this. So I'll just use this uh, graph to understand this theory. Then I'll just draw it here. It's like this, right? Then if you equate this into zero, one value is zero. It's here. This is the one value over here. So I'll just put zero it's zero it's here zero is a one answer then other ones is x minus one is x equals to one that is one answer one right then if i equate this c to zero you'll be obtaining the answer uh, this is minus one sorry uh, if it is uh, this is plus one and this is 
uh, 2x plus 3 that means uh, it will turn up into 3 over 2 as the same thing as before it's uh, just it doesn't make a difference it's 3 over 2 itself so it doesn't make it so you can just put here as 3 over 2 so this is 3 over 2 right okay these are the points right then if you draw this graph if you draw this this graph you can understand that this graph is a graph with negative x cube coefficient here plus c into plus c into minus 2 is a negative coefficient negative coefficient means what kind of a graph is that it's a graph somewhere like this Then if I use this region, I'll use a different color, right, okay. Then which range you need? You need the range, if I use this in equity, that's what I'm working out over here, right. The region where this is negative, where you can see it's negative. Over here it's negative. Again, over here it's negative. Then if you use that in equity, well, you can understand the answer is zero to one and 3 over 2 above, 0 to 1 and 3 over 2 above. So if you want, you can use this equation or this inequation. Doesn't matter whatever the way you use it, right? That's what I want to show you, right? Okay. So you can obtain the same answer from whatever the way you use it, right? Okay. Right. Let's come up with this example, right? Here I need to remove this x plus 1 and x. What can you do? You can multiply x plus one from x plus one squared from both sides to remove this x plus one. Then I can multiply with x squared from both sides. So you can multiply both sides by x plus one squared into x squared. Then one x plus one and one x plus one get cancelled from here one x to one x cancel over here. The remaining term is three, three times of x plus one into x squared. From here two times of x plus one squared into x then I can brought these terms to this side. Then you can understand that what are the common terms. X into X plus one is common. From here, if you take X into X plus one out, three remain over here and another X remain over here. From here, two remain, one X plus one remain. So if you simplify this turn up into three X minus two X is X minus two, right? Then what are the intersections? X equals to zero, sorry. x equals to 0, x equals to minus 1 and x equals to plus 2. Now you can see it's a cubic equation with positive coefficient. The graph shape is like that and we need to understand the range where it's less than 0. Where you can reach less than 0. Over here it's less than 0 and from here onwards less than 0. That means less than minus 1 and from 0 to 2 the function is less than 0. That is how you need to answer for part f. Right. Then if I want to answer this question, I have to remove this x plus 1 and x minus 1. Multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared and x minus 1 squared. Then if you do this, 1x plus 1 to x plus 1 get cancelled. 1x minus 1 to x minus 1 get cancelled. From here it's 1 into x plus 1 squared into x minus 1 squared. Then if I brought all the terms to this side, let's turn up to x plus 1 squared, x minus 1 squared minus 3 times of x plus 1 into x minus 1. Then if you, uh, then you can write that. If you write it, you can understand that 1x plus 1 is common and 1x minus 1 is common. From here, if you take 1x plus 1 and x minus 1 out, the remaining term is x plus 1 into x minus 1. From here, if you take x plus 1 and x minus 1, the 3 remain because it's minus 3 because if I brought it to this side, it will turn up to minus 3. Then if you simplify, x into x is x squared. Uh, this is a, it's a difference between two square numbers. x squared minus one minus three, that is turn up to x squared minus four. Then you can understand that x squared minus four is x minus two into x plus two. Now again, it's turn up into a quadratic equation of the power four equation. Then what are the solutions? x equals to minus one over here. x equals to plus one over here x equals to plus 2 over here, x equals to minus 2 over here. It's a power 4 equation with positive coefficient, just like a W shape. Then we need to see whether what is the inequality. 
this part is greater than zero positive range where you can see it's positive here it's positive here it's positive and again here it's positive right if i uh, if it is not clear with you i can just uh, color this stuff this range is positive again here it's positive again here it's positive right then what are the x ranges if i just use the x ranges here here and here then simply you can get the answer less than minus 2 over here minus 1 to plus 1 over here and greater than 2 is the other part of it right that's how you need to obtain the answer for this question right then let's come up with this to remove this part what can you do you can multiply both sides by x squared x plus 1 squared into x minus 2 squared then if you multiply this side 2 into 2 of x squared x squared into x plus 1 squared x minus 2 squared into less than or equal to 3 times of x squared into x plus 1 squared and x minus 2 squared i'm multiplying with x squared into x plus 1 squared into x minus 2 squared from here one x squared and x squared get cancels from here one x plus one and one x minus two get cancels and then i'll draw all the terms to this side from here you can say two x plus one squared x minus two squared from here minus three x squared x plus one and x minus two so if you look into these common terms you can see one x plus one and x minus two is common from this side if you take x plus one and x minus two out two remain one other x plus one and another x minus two remain minus from here if you take x plus one and x minus two out the remaining term is 3x squared then expand these brackets if you expand this bracket you will receive the answer minus 4 minus 2x minus x squared is greater than zero here also i have used the same trick i just multiply uh, the inequality by negative mark therefore the side of the inequality changes and all of these values turn up to plus that's kind of a uh, what you call simplification trick we use uh, with that you can obtain the answers right then what are the intersections so you can use a calculator to simplify x plus 1 equals to 0 means x equals to minus 1 x minus 2 equals to 0 means x equals to plus 2 and you just put this one into a calculator and see whether what is the answer you won't get any real answers therefore it gain only two solution though it's a quadratic equation or power 4 equation it does not the w deviated and uh, what you call it deviated from the shape w and turn up into a same as a quadratic equation just like the w shape diminished as a quadratic equation there's a slight deviation is there but uh, in our level no need of uh, it's, it should be ignored over here to get that shape you can just find out like that then you can understand the range where it's negative from where i can see negative it's negative from minus one to plus two during this range only the function become negative right let's move back to this question so here also pretty simple question multiply both sides by x minus four squared then one x minus four get cancels then if you brought everything over here you will obtain the answer x minus four into three x minus 40 then what are the solutions x equals to 4 and x equals to 14 over 3 with that it's a quadratic with a negative minima sorry positive coefficient is a minima we need the positive range this part is more than 0 less greater than 4 and greater than 14 over 3 if i use if i just uh, use some coloring for that you can see this is a range where i positive over here and after that t1 the functional value is positive right therefore it's from here onwards and here onwards would be the answer for this question x is less than 4 and greater than 14 over 3 would be the answer right that's the answer for that right okay let's move up to the uh, yeah so that is the answer for uh, question by uh, part i then uh, this is the way of solving this quadratic inequality this is the first part of the uh, section which is in the topic of inequality we will meet you uh, in the second part of the inequality uh, 